are a feature of glacial deposition that are formed from glacial till or boulder clay that we've looked at previously. They're very long features and they can reach like about up to a kilometre in length and they can be about 500 metres in width and about maybe 50 metres in height so they're pretty big features. One end of the drumlin as we can see here is particularly steep which is the stoss end and the lee side has a much more gentle and gradual slope that reaches ground level. Sometimes there's several drumlins that form together. Now these are called a swarm of drumlins because they look a bit like a box of contained eggs with the sort of bumps and rounded lumps that you see. Now the deposit from a drumlin usually happens or is widely believed to happen when the glacier actually loses some of its power and it begins to melt slightly so from there it's maybe deposited some of the material. The shape might be from when colder temperatures returned and the glacier has then advanced a wee bit more. The second feature we're going to look at is an eskar. Eskars are formed as a result of running water, usually under the glacier. There are long, linear mounds of sand and gravel that kind of snake their way across the landscape, similar to that of the river that was previously carrying it. So, any material in the river would eventually be dropped when the glacier and the river water has enough power and then when the glacier retreats these deposited linear sort of shapes sort of remain and you can see here the sort of long thin linear shape in the middle of our screen. Games we can see here are sort of mounds of sediment which are deposited along the front of a slowly melting or a glacier that's no longer moving. Sediment consists of sand and gravels and it builds up and it mounds of, as the ice melts more and more sediment is deposited on top of the old sediment that was, that was previously there. Often a cane will collapse when the ice melts back and it leaves the mound unsupported. Cane terraces I'm just going to touch on are sort of very similar to eskers in that except they are formed at the side of a glacier where the sort of glacier would meet the, the valley wall. Kettle holes, as we can see here, are formed by blocks of ice that are separated from the main glacier. <coughs> and what happens is the weight of the ice becomes too heavy <coughs> for the sediment it's sitting on and it eventually leaves huge depressions. Now, these depressions can fill with water and once they become kettle hole lakes. Loch Leven is a really good example of a kettle hole lake. Outwash plains are large areas of glacial deposit. They're deposited by meltwater streams that sort of come out of the glacial snout or the end of the glacier. They're formed of gravel, sand and clays, clays being the furthest away from the glacier as they are the smallest deposits. Material will be sorted into sort of larger deposits first as they are the heavier. Now to see the extent of glaciation we can look at an outwash plane and the thicker it is the more sediment, the more powerful the glacier is and some outwash planes can be up to 50 metres thick. This diagram allows you to see if you can identify some of the features we've spoke about in this video. The answers and an explanation on each one will come up later in the video, but have a go. <laughs> 